Hey guys, Balkan Architect here and in today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to model this cool looking steel warehouse in Revit. And we're actually going to be doing all the structural elements, so the whole construction will be modeled. We're going to do all the structural connections and all the bracing and all those necessary good things. But before I get started, I would just like to ask you to like this tutorial, it helps me out a lot. And if you haven't already, I suggest you subscribe because I make tutorials like this every day. Okay, so let's get started. Here I am in Revit and I always start from just a architectural template. And first I just like to set the units. So I'm just going to type in UN and change this to meters because that's what I prefer working in. Now let's add some grid lines. So you can either go here to the datum tab and hit the grid or you can use the shortcut GR which I'm going to use right here. So I'm just going to create one grid line like this, then type in GR again, use pick lines and offset it at a value of 10 meters. So you can go offset, offset, offset. So we need four grids going lengthwise or vertically. And then I'm just going to use grid again, place one horizontally over here, select it, rename it to A because we want these to be one, two, three, and this, these ones, the horizontal ones to be a, B, C, D. So just go grid, offset, and let's use a 8 meter offset over here. So you just go bam, bam, bam. And okay, so we have our grid lines. And you can select them and kind of change them around if you so desire. But we have some grid lines and let's just do the columns now. So I'm just going to type in CL for structural column. And here first for the depth, I'm going to set it to height. And from unconnected, I'm going to set it to level 2. So it's starting from level 1 and going all the way to level 2. And I'm just going to do these four over here because then we're going to do some adjustments and then we can copy everything down the line. So I'm just going to place them at these grid centers or you can use this at grid intersections, but we only have four, so it's quicker this way. And because you can only see them like a line, so over here, I suggest you change this to fine, and then you can see them kind of a bit better. And I'm just using the universal column. You don't have to load any in for this part. Okay, so once we have this, let's go to level two. And here we can see, again, we need to change the detail level to fine, and we can't really edit these. So I'm just going to type in VR for view range and change the, this bottom to unlimited, as well as view depth and just go apply and now we can actually select it and move it from a level two. Okay, so once we have all of this, let's create a beam. So just type in BM for beam. And then I'm going to start off from here and go all the way to the other side. Okay, so once we have this beam, I'm just going to split it up a bit. So just type in SL for split element and I'm going to split it here, here, and I'm going to sp split it at center lines. So here at five, here at five, and here at five as well. Okay, so we've got these split beams. So just go now in 3D and let's select this one, this one, this one, and change this to 1.5. Okay, not that side. So this side, 1.5. Yeah, and now select these three. Just hold the control when selecting and you get this little plus sign so you can select more of them. So just now change this side, I guess. Yeah, that works. Okay, so now I just like to use trim and extend just to make sure that connection is, that we have a strong connection over here. Okay, so once we have that, now it's time to add some structural connections and we're going to be using this steel bar over here and if you haven't seen the tutorial I did one tutorial earlier this week on this steel tab in Revit this is just a new element from Revit 2019 and make sure to download Revit 19 so in the description of this video I'm going to link up the the tutorial on how to download Revit 2019 as well as the tutorial on how to use this steel tab that you have and all of these steel tools. But anyway, once we're here, let's just add some structural connections. And I go over this in depth in one of those tutorials. So make sure to check that out. Okay, so I'm just going to select all of these, hold shift, add them, go OK. And now I'm just going to select these two beams, go to steel, connection, and then choose just apex connection that's the first one usually and if you can see it 
that's okay just change the detail level to fine again and now you can see it and I'm just going to repeat that on these two other sides and the reason why you can't do it at the same time is because you can only make a connection between two elements if you select four then it's going to freak out and it's not going to know what to do so let's just go apex notch over here okay so we have these apex parts now let's select the three of these and go to steel connection and let's now search from for some bracing let's just find it bracing double I think it's this one yeah that's the one so we have this connection that basically adds these two these two beams to the column and do the same thing over here just go steel connection and where is bracing double yeah there you go okay and for these endpoints this is just a quick clip angle connection so just find click angle and if you're one of the structure guys, I apologize if I make any connection mistakes. I'm, this is not really my profession, so I'm not that educated on this topic. So just go steel connection. And let's use the clip angle here as well. Okay, that works. And when you're adding this clip angle, if it looks like this and doesn't make any sense, just make sure that the big blue dot is on the column and not on the beam. Okay, so once we have that, we have all of the elements we want over here. You can add some base plates over here, just like this. Go steel connection and add just a d -d -d base plate. Yeah, kind of like this. And then you can add this to all of them and add some, some... Go to structure here and add some isolated foundations, but I'm going to leave that to you. So I'm just going to do this part over here. So now select all of these elements and uh, go to level one or level two, whatever you choose, and just go copy. And then I'm going to make sure that multiple is selected. And let's start from here and copy over here. Now, this might take a while because you have a lot of these connection elements and it's kind of a heavy file that you're copying around so it usually takes a while to copy everything but anyway when you have all of this done now it's time to go to 3d to see what all of this looks like and this is what you get now we need to add some roof elements and basically we need to have some beam system running lengthwise over here so to do that i'm just going to go into south elevation and here you see this is just at course so we can see our beams just as lines but that's okay and now I want to see this angle over here so I'm just going to go to type in di for dimension and choose angular dimension and just get this angle so just remember that this is 16.7 and now you can go back into level 2 and let's do a roof over here so just go architecture roof here we go rectangle and I'm just going to start off from here all the way to this center point over here select these two sides and uncheck the fine slope and select these two lines and change the slope to that 16.7 that we found out was the angle and just go finish go into 3d and this is what you get now I just like to select this roof right click override graphics in view by element and let's just turn up the transparency to 40 percent just to make sure we can see through this now it's time to do a beam system over here and for that I'm going to be loading in a new smaller beam because we have this big one and it makes sense for the beam system on top to be a bit smaller so just go to insert load family uh, go back into metric let's go structural framing go to steel and I'm just going to be using the same universal beam open it up just instead of the this is like 300 size I think this is 305 so let's choose the smaller one let's do let's do let's do 152 go okay so that's half as big of course you would probably need to do some calculations for this but anyway here in the structure tab you have this beam system and the shortcut for that is BS okay BS okay the shortcut doesn't work for some reason let's just use then this 
And first I like to set the work plane. So just go work plane, pick a plane, OK. And then pick this, the bottom plane of this roof line. And then use pick lines and pick this line, this line, this line, and this here. And then just by using trim and extend, trim everything in place like so. And then for the beam direction, just make sure that it's going lengthwise like so. Okay, so you just go here and you scroll down a bit and search here for universal beam. Make sure that it's the smaller one. Go OK, apply, and you get this. Now we can select this and we can change this spacing to, let's say, 1.2. Yeah, that looks a bit better. And now let's go into south elevation again, but let's change this to fine. And as you can see here, these beams are now intruding on the, the these beams over here. So we want to lift the whole roof up by a certain value to get these up here. So I'm just going to measure from down here vertically to, or you can go perhaps from, it will be easier from here to here. And we can read now it's point, it's 0 0.1591. So I'm just going to select this roof and here for the offset, I'm just going to type in 0 0.1951. I guess that was the number. Nope, it was too much. Let's see, now we need to lower it by 0.36. Uh, how much is that? 0 0.191. 0 0.15. Oops. Okay, this looks good. Let's try 0.16. Yeah, that looks about right. Okay, so now if we go here into 3D, so you can see now our beam system is actually on top of the roof. And now we can just select the beam system and kind of mirror it around. So just type in mirror, mirror it around here, and you get this. That's because this is set as a work plane. So I'm just going to delete this, go here to set work plane, and make sure to set it to, I don't know, level 1 or level 2. Okay, so now select this beam system again, go mirror or MM, and then flip it to the other side. And once you have this, you select the beam system, select this beam system, you hold the control, you select the roof. Okay, so once everything is selected, you go to level 2, and you type in CO for copy, and you copy from here to here and to here as well. And if we go into 3D, that looks like this. And now let's select these two roofs, and right-click, override graphics in view by element, and drop them down to 40% transparency just to see everything. And one more thing before I finish, let's do some uh, bracing. So when you go here to the structure, you've got this brace or BR is the shortcut for brace, but we need to load something in. I don't like using these universal beams. I like using round beams for this. So let's just find round over here. Round bars. Okay, this looks about right. And then scroll to see something. Uh, let's try 136. Go OK. So we have our round beam loaded in. Make sure the 3D snapping is turned on. And let's go from bottom to midpoint. Then from midpoint up here. Then from up here to midpoint of this. Okay, to there and go from there all the way to the top. Okay, so we have this bracing, structural bracing, and now let's just do the connections real quick. So select these two, go to steel, connection, and let's try gusset plate, I guess, diagonal. Yeah, it's this one. Yeah, this one looks right. So let's use that one here and here as well. And for this one, we need kind of a double one. So just go to steel connection. Go 
gusset plate too. Yeah, that looks about right. And do the same thing here. Yeah, that looks nice. And let's just finish off by adding this connection over here. So you just go to steel and then you search for something that perhaps works for that. Yeah, okay. Okay, so you get the point. Now you need to select all of this and kind of mirror it around. These uh, structural bracings usually go on corners and they're basically there to stop from all the wind resistance or all the, all the, all the horizontal forces that are applied to this building. Because all the vertical forces that are coming from up here, they go from these beams over here to these beams over here and then to columns. But all of the wind and everything kind of tries to make everything fall on that side. So you get this structural bracing in the corners of your warehouse. Okay, but anyway, that's it for this tutorial. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like and share this video. And if you have any questions, comments or suggestions for future tutorials, leave them in the comment section below. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.